bro. I got me some new yampas. So hey, you crooked. Are those 20s? They tans, but I keep them clean. Yeah, all right, all right. All right, so we're working on old 12 or Scout. Howdy. <laughs> How's your mama and them? Yeah, how's the mama and them? So this thing right here is pretty freaking sweet, dude, but we got tires in today, and so we're having to throw at least one tire on. I have to look. We plan on just doing a video tomorrow, but I, I looked across the shop, and Steven's over here pulling a tire. I'm like, bro, hold up. Yeah. <laughs> hold up. So, went and grabbed the camera, and that's what we're doing. Check these tires out, dude. Power King, come on. Those add power. Extra traction. Hold on, I'm done with the camera here. Extra traction. I know a guy who's got a set. Power King. Oh yeah, I do have a set. Mita. Booyah. Don't look too long though, because you'll know what it looks like already. Yeah. We're gonna pretend like we don't know exactly what that looks like on that wheel, okay? Exactly. Even though we're parked right here and it's right there, We've we don't know, it. we've never seen it. This so we're part. excited. So. He's gonna dismount one off the factory wheel and throw it on there and we're gonna see what we be having. I also cleaned up how, I cleaned up my hubcap a little bit. Oh yeah, dude, check this out. So look, this one, that's just like as it came out of the barn and this is after getting steel wooled. Broski. And so I got- Shoppers, bro. Yeah, I got a lot of that to do. Like, oh the yeah. Headlight bezel's been painted. All that stuff, I know stuff, this dude. will clean up, Yeah. So. Fix me a power king, dude. Remember, lefty tighty, are you gonna buy parts? That's right, the, so the right side, passenger side of a Scout, left hand threads, lefty tighty, righty loosey. Otherwise you sit there and impact it, like we did when we were kids on our Scout, and you run all the studs and your dad gets home, and well you just yeah. tell him that it was always like that. Yeah. And he knows you're a liar. <laughs> That is so much better looking than what you had on there. You didn't like the white wall uh, mall tire? No. That's what they did with Scouts. Went to the mall? Yeah, they put baby tires on them. They were mall the right crawlers? Size. The original mall crawler. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Okay, I got enough weights on here. I hope my hubcap still works. Yeah, it was like seven and a half ounces on one side. It's literally half a pound. Borowski. That looks so much freaking cooler, dude, than that. This is bunk. This is like a librarian in 1962. And this is like a Twelver. Yeah in 1963. All right, so we got this Dweeb Scout in here and uh, we're gonna do the, you're doing shapers today, right? Shapers and everything. Yep. So before we did that though, we wanted to pull the top off because Scouts look cool, but they look way cooler without the top. The full top is like the worst look, especially with one stock. Like if this was on like 35s or 38s or something, it might look cool.
like Tom Cruise. All right, guys, we're up here on a Saturday knocking out the rest of the stuff on the Scout. And we've got some things done that we didn't film, um, one of which was swapping to this Weber carburetor. So this is a 3236 uh, DGEV, I think is what the uh, entire name is on this carburetor. And it comes with the two barrel to one barrel adapter. And uh, we really didn't have to do a whole lot with it. We uh, put a light scan of RTV just because that is a Chinesium adapter, it looks like. So we didn't want to have any vacuum leaks. and. Uh, the shape of it's kind of whack, so we wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to leak anything. So we cleaned everything up, planed it all down, put the adapter on, put the carburetor on, and spent a little bit of time tuning it. Uh, we got the kids up here, so if you hear them hollering in the background, that's that's what's happening. Um, we actually played a little bit of hell with this thing, tuning it for a minute because we uh, it's got a timed vacuum port on the back side, uh, actually back here where we have the uh, original. Not completely original, but the line, the uh, uh, vacuum advance line that goes to the distributor, um, we had this just hanging off to the side because we didn't initially see the uh, timed vacuum port on the back side of the carburetor. So we had some lean tip in issues, and uh, it, it gave us a good reason to verify timing and look at vacuum and all that kind of stuff, in which we made all look perfect. Um, base timing on this thing. Um, after messing around from everywhere between about 8 to 15 degrees, I think we set it at about 11 or 12 and mechanical advance somewhere in the low 30s, yes, sir. 32, 33 degrees, um, which was, that's all usable. Um, don't know if that's spec or not, but we know the mechanical advance is working. It's not over advancing. We're not up in the 40s and the 50s or uh, no mechanical advance at all. So we had some drivability issues we were trying to work on and I think a big part of it was fuel pressure and the factory carburetor. A little holly that was on it was just tired. It was leaking gas externally and internally. Yeah. Uh, we had black smoke coming out the tailpipe at part throttle and um, under a low vacuum condition like wide open throttle. It was extremely excessive. Yeah. Um, and then when you close the throttle it was even worse. It looked like a old Detroit diesel <laughs> with a dirty uh, air cleaner <laughs> yeah and a bad turbo so uh fuel mileage was <laughs> terrible we burned through 10 gallons of gas and we probably went like a total of 20 miles yeah and so the oil quality was terrible it had gas in it and all that stuff so anyway long story kind of short now kind of long because i've talked a lot long story medium length yeah a long story kind of medium <laughs> except for what i just said now making it long it's long <sighs> Thanks to y'all's longevity, yeah, we can tell you about our long story. We swapped this carb on and it's running like a champ. 10 or 11 degrees base timing, um, it's perfect. Fires up on the first crank of the key. A Holly regulator, running this, this regulator, set it about, I think they called for, it, there's mixed information all over Two the internet. Two and a half to four and a half. Yeah. And we're at like three and a half. Yeah, we're trying so. to set about three and a half to four and it seemed like the most consistent thing because we're running a mechanical pump was to crack the regulator until you could see the actual pulse of the lift pump and we jammed the nut down there and it hasn't lost any volume. Before we had it set a little bit lower and it would just it would just lose fuel pressure to the point where we were down at half a pound. So I uh, don't know if that's a little trick or not, but if you're putting a Weber on one of these and you crack the regulator and you're choking it down, uh, if you get the needle to smooth out, back it up a little bit till you see the pulses of the lift pump and jam it down and see if that doesn't work for you because it's worked out perfect here. Um, so now that we've got the carburetor and stuff dialed in and working like it's supposed to, mechanical and vacuum advance, idle, everything's beautiful, we are working on the fluids because, well, like we said, the oil in the motor was really gassy and uh, this thing hasn't had any love in a really long time. No, to be honest, I didn't check any fluid since we've gotten it other than we checked the dipstick, it had coolant oil, Yeah. we kind of went and put it in. We haven't done anything real crazy, but it's a good thing we didn't because the front and diff, front and rear diff were both super black and low. Yeah. Um, trans wasn't so bad, TKs wasn't so bad, but the axles, I think it might've been like original. So um, what are you, what are we putting in this thing? Well, thanks to Schaefer's, they are a huge part of all of our builds with oil. The front rear axle and T-case is getting their Supreme um, ADW90 
So that's front axle, rear axle transfer case. Engine, I like 1540 and everything basically. Yeah, it's the same stuff we run in our Cummins trucks and all the diesel stuff. It's got zinc, it's got molly Our in air it. compressor, we literally run it in anything that we own that takes oil from lawnmowers to chains, it doesn't matter. It gets Schaefer's 1540 and- It works really great. well, yeah. Transmission, got their 50 weight, which you can run this in um, G56s, NV5600s, Basically, from what I understand, like any and all new manual transmissions, you know, diesel truck related, you can run this in, so. We also use the Schaefer's 219 grease. It's like an extreme pressure waterproof grease. It's green also. And uh, we use that in the closed knuckle front axles on these international trucks from the little ones all the way up to the big ones um, in place of corn head grease. So, Shapers has really, really good stuff, especially if you got an older truck and you're looking for a good lubricant for everything that you have, engine, trans, T-case, axles, all that stuff, they have what you're looking for. So, um, thanks to Shapers, we appreciate you guys. They've had our back for years, um, going on 10 years now, maybe even longer. We've been, been running Shapers in all of the hot rod stuff and all of our old trucks, and now we run it in basically everything that comes into the shop because it's, a, it's just a really good lubricant. And uh, so we've stocked up on it. If you need something, y'all holler at us. Go check out Schaefer's website. Look at all the stuff that they have to offer. And I'm sure they've got something that fits your application there. Um, so anyway, we're going to finish changing fluids. Yep. And we're going to go for a ride. And we're going to enjoy our life. Oh, yeah. That's what we're doing. So, uh, yeah, if you can't tell, big shout out to Schaefer's. They've got our back. We wanted to take an opportunity to do the same thing for those guys. Steven's wearing his swag today. Um, I got some Holly stuff on. We love those guys too. So anyway, just trying to show some love to the people that show love to us and give y'all guys some insight as far as what we're using on the Scout and what we use for basically any and everything that needs a lubricant. better and better. It's definitely quieter. It is way quieter. Almost no noise out of the gear train. Pretty sweet. That's what it's all about. Go find something cool and fix it. Later.